Um, as an introduction to anybody here watching this interview with us today, hello, I'm joined here by Craig Natsuhara in an interview on Craig's experience in his practice in immigration law and some notes on the certificate in the labor market impact assessment process course here at Ashton College. Hi. Hello. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your experience in practicing immigration laws? So I've had the good fortune of practicing immigration law since September 2000. And during that time, been specializing mainly helping temporary foreign workers and employers. Uh, so it's been, it's been 23 years. What are some of the responsibilities in your position? Okay, so the whole time that I've been practicing immigration law, I've always been quite hands-on with my team, with uh, other lawyers, with paralegals, with immigration consultants, so I would say my responsibilities have always been quite consistent. Um, even to this day, I'm still quite hands-on with preparing applications. Um, so what made you interested in immigration law? One thing I really want to stress is I very quickly came to love immigration law because you're helping people. And it's very gratifying to be able to know that you're helping people, you're helping people come to Canada, helping em employers with their with their employees, with global talent. So overall, it's just a win-win situation. And I, 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 love, I love the practice. Why did you end up uh, deciding to teach at Ashton College? I ended up teaching at Ashton related to, because Ron McKay is my mentor, has always been my mentor over the past 23 years. And he, he asked me if I'd be interested in teaching the LMIA certificate course. And I was just very interested right away. LMIAs is a very difficult uh, topic, something that I always stress to the, to the students that if, if you can really master how to prepare LMIAs and be comfortable with it, then basically you've mastered the hardest part of, um, I would call immigration for temporary foreign workers. And so everything else is easier than that. So teaching it, I found of great interest in the fact that you, it's it's 16 hours. Originally I thought, wow, how, how can I fill in 16 hours of class? But once I actually taught, taught the course, I found that it actually is very easy to fill 16 hours. And it, it's pretty amazing how dense the, the this, this topic is. Yeah, I feel like when you just look at the course, it, it doesn't seem like that much. But then when you really think about it, it's it's a lot of information condensed into, you know, a couple weeks. So can you give me an overview of this course? Uh, any topics that are covered? Uh, any requirements to apply for the course itself? Um, or any of the learning goals that students should focus on? Okay, so a description of the, the course, I would say the way we have structured it is we've tried to align every class approximately to a different LMIA category because that that's something to realize is there isn't just one type of labor market impact assessment. There are different different types. I won't go into the detail here, but there are different types or different streams and there are quite a quite a bit of difference between them, so it isn't it is very helpful for practitioners to know the difference, and then it just equips them so they feel comfortable trying out these different LMIA categories. So that that's generally how we try to divide the class, but we do start off going very slowly, especially if the majority of the students don't have much experience with LMIAs. So we take it very slowly just to make sure that everybody understands the fundamentals or the um, the building blocks that we then uh, build upon going to the different categories. Uh, can you give me an example or two of the main topics that this course has to offer? So when it comes to the different LMIA categories, we typically start off with one which is called high wage. And that's 
that's the most common one I would say. And we really get into the nuts and bolts and the requirements and how to look at an application. One thing that I really try to stress is I, I share applications that I've prepared myself. I share Word documents to encourage practitioners if you know if they want to have samples of what submission should look like. If they want some samples of writing styles, then I'm happy to provide them. And we go through application forms very, very carefully, very closely, just so people understand the more challenging sections of these application forms. We go through the minutia of, of actually preparing applications. Um, and then we get into other categories, which 80% of it is similar to the first category that I mentioned, but the, the other 20% is slightly different. And those, some of the names are, for instance, we talk about high wage. So another example is a low wage LMI application. Another one that seems very popular with, with the practitioners is, is called the permanent labor market impact assessment. And that's predominantly used for when people want to become permanent residents, which of course is the, the end goal for, for many immigrants to Canada. And then the other main category that I particularly am, am fond about is one called global talent stream. And that is one that's more oriented towards tech occupations because the federal government, uh, since its introduction in 2017, has been trying to support Canada's tech sector. Yeah, I feel like there's um, a lot of topics that seem intertwined with each other, but are vastly different um, that, you know, students have to learn. That's accurate, yes. Uh, so is there any technology or applications that students should know before applying to the course or if they'll learn any during the course? The, the, the way that applications are prepared and submitted has changed over the years. Up until a few years ago, in fact, you would have to fax LMI applications into the government, which now sounds very, very uh, antiquated. Some people used to joke that that's the only reason why your firm would have a fax machine was to submit labor market impact assessment applications. But April of 2023, so almost a year ago, the uh, that changed. And so applications must be submitted through what's called LMIA online. And there are definitely some conveniences and other advantages to it being online compared to the old paper fax applications. Uh, but yes, the way that you submit applications has evolved over time. So what do you think makes this course stand out? Yeah, so I guess there is a lot of support um, from the course, from the instructors at the course, you know, all of the material that you guys provide everybody. That's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to mm -hmm. support practitioners to become comfortable in this area of practice. What makes this course stand out? Well, two things come to mind right away. Like I mentioned, personally, labor market impact assessments are the most difficult temporary foreign worker type of application. And so I, I recommend everybody become knowledgeable in this area. At the same time, I also recommend, I try to recommend other areas that, that practitioners can focus on so that they can broaden their, their businesses. Uh, and I also like to stress that Canada is just in such a good situation in terms of having labor shortages. So there is such a strong demand for immigration, which means uh, representatives to help people with their immigration. And that demand arguably is just going to increase over time. It's not going to go away. So this is a very, this is a very good area business-wise for practitioners to be in, in addition to it also being very gratifying to practice in. The second thing I would say is this fact that I share applications. We're going, we are actually trying to be as practical as possible, not theoretical, uh, so that people at the end of the day, hopefully after they, they graduate from this course, they'll feel much more comfortable uh, preparing applications. And I provide, for each class, I provide materials of over 100 pages. 
uh, that I hope students can use as reference materials to guide them as they're making applications after they take this course. Um, so what are some of the career opportunities that students who take this course, you know, can enter into? Well, like I said, LMIA is, is a very valuable skill set to have. And it can be a launching pad to expand to to specialize in temporary foreign workers. And that's just the there, there are two main halves to helping temporary foreign workers. There's obtaining temporary resident status like work permits, but then a high percentage of these foreign nationals want to become permanent residents. So if we can help them with their work permit, and then that can evolve into a permanent residence application possibly with the support of some type of provincial nominee program. There's a lot of ways that we can help the same individuals. Um, and then I guess in retrospect to the career opportunities, what does the workload split generally look like? Um, is there one person working with one application or are they working with um, separate parts of an application? It can be either way. The same immigration cons consultant can help an individual with the permanent residence after the work permit. In fact, I think that makes a lot of sense because they know the history of that person's background. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but that's not to say that there could be different persons. For, for instance, if you're in the same firm, you want to specialize in work permits and LMIAs, and you have a colleague who wants to specialize in permanent residence, that's a very good practice. That's a very good division of labor as well. So are there any barriers, not just to the course, but also like the profession? I would say if there's any barrier, it's just because LMIAs are so difficult to do. Some people might have a mental block. Some people might not feel comfortable. There are a lot of practitioners out there who try to avoid doing labor market impact assessment. So they just refer that out to, to other practitioners. But I believe that practitioners should learn how to do this type of application so they did, they don't have to be uh, they don't have to be scared they don't have to refer it out to somebody else they could take it on themselves and i guess my last question is what is your number one advice to um, any students heading in this direction? Do you have any extra tips for them? Um, any tips for the course or any tips for the profession itself? My number one piece of advice to somebody considering taking this course is to try it, to, to take this course. 16 hours might sound daunting, but it, it is a fairly complicated area that we want to go through slowly so people understand. We don't want to rush through it. Um, and I think people will be pleasantly surprised. They will feel much more comfortable with this complex topic after taking this course. So I, I encourage anybody who is somewhat interested to take this course. It's very practical. <laughs>